Hey students, this is a quick video showing you how to formulate a hypothesis with the General Social Survey 2010 data set. Okay, so hopefully you all have the ability to open up the General Social Survey 2010. Um, I already opened up SPSS, so now I'm just going to open up the data set. Click on that. And if you look on Canvas, what it's asking you to do, when you go down to the hypothesis section, It's asking you to find two variables, an independent variable and a dependent variable. So in this example, I use sex as the independent variable and then abony, which is a variable asking about whether or not uh, the respondent supports abortion for any reason. Um, and so we have an independent variable, obviously the variable that we believe is going to influence the dependent variable and a dependent variable and our hypothesis should say something like women are more likely than men to say that it is okay for a woman to have an abortion for any reason. Okay. Now, the way you're going to go about developing a hypothesis, you're going to find two variables in the general social survey that you think are related to each other. So you're going to have one that's an independent variable and then another one that's a dependent variable. So again, the independent variable is a variable that is supposed to influence or affect the dependent variable. Okay. Now, some of these variables, they just cannot be dependent variable, dependent variable. So for example, age, that's not something that can be a dependent variable because how can age depend on something, right? What can your age possibly depend on? The year you were born or something like that? Um, so that can't be a dependent variable. Something like uh, sex, right? Which is asking whether or not the respondent is either male or female. That is a variable that can never be a dependent variable, right? What can your sex depend on? It just doesn't really make sense. So things like race, things like sex, things like age, things that really can't be changed, or things that can never be a dependent variable, but all of these variables that you see here uh, can be independent variables. So what you want to do is look through the data set and try to find two variables that you think might be related to each other. So for example, you might think that age as the independent variable will influence whether or not how often you attend religious services, okay? Now, when you're looking at these variables, what you're seeing right here are variable names, okay? Now, the variable names might not make sense to you. So, for example, you look at something like attend and you, you don't know what that's asking. So, what you want to do is hover over these variables, attend, and then you'll see a label that says how often the respondent attends religious services, okay? So that label at least gives you some idea of what question is being asked. Now, if you want to get more in-depth into the actual questions being asked in the survey, what you're want, going to want to do is right-click on this and then click variable information. So we know that this question is asking something about how often the respondent attends religious services. Um, so if the respondent says, I never attend religious services, then we would essentially code that as zero. If the respondent says, I go less than once a year, then we uh, code that as one. Um, if the respondent says, uh, I go once a year, we would put two. If the respondent said they go several times a year, then we put three and so on. If the respondent said, oh, I go more than once a week, or if I go like every single day or something like that, then we would uh, put down eight there, right? If the respondent either didn't answer, didn't know, uh, not applicable, then that was coded as nine. So when you see all these uh, numbers here, two, zero, um, you can find out how the variable is coded by clicking on variable information. Okay? So for example, you might think that age will influence whether or not somebody attend, how often somebody attends religious services. So that could be a hypothesis that you have. The only restriction on the two variables that you can't use in this data set is you can't use the two variables that are used in the example paper already because those variables have already been used and you could theoretically just plagiarize what the previous student did. So don't, don't use those two variables. Um, some other examples. So you might think that maybe degree, your degree, will influence whether or not you've ever been divorced or separated. Um, or maybe the degree you earn maybe influences whether or not you've used crack uh, cocaine in the last uh, 30 days. Now, like I said, after I hovered over this, it says crack 30 versus R last use crack cocaine. 
So zero, the person just didn't answer. One, within the past 30 days. Two, more than 30 days ago, but within. So it gives you a little bit of information, but it doesn't give you as much information as you might want. So let's just say that you see a variable, it seems interesting to you, and you want to know more about the variable. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to come over to Canvas. So jump over to the SOS3 class, and you're gonna to wanna to go up to the GSS Data Explorer. So that's what this is here for. So you're gonna click on this, and it's gonna take you to a URL, the General Social Survey uh, Data Explorer. And here you can actually get the exact question that's being asked on the survey, and you can actually get uh, the possible responses to the questions. So for example, let's just say I wanna know a little bit more information about the variable crack 30. I come over here, I type in crack 30. Press. Now I see the variable crack 30, I click on it. So this is the actual question that's being asked on the survey. So how long has it been since you last used crack cocaine in chunk or rock form, okay? Um, so the possible responses are within the past 30 days, more than 30 days ago, but within the past 12 months. Uh, if the person said more than 12 months ago, but within the past three years, then you'd code that as three. Um, more than three years ago, then that was coded as four. If the person didn't know, then the uh, researcher put eight. If there was no answer, the, push, the researcher put nine. And if it was not applicable, something like maybe the person never used crack cocaine, then uh, the researcher would put zero, okay? So the GSS Data Explorer is designed to give you the ability to look into the variable and get a little bit more information on whatever variable might be interesting to you, okay? So like I said, you wanna go here, find two variables, you know, a quick way to get a little bit of information on them is to just hover over them. Another way you can get a little bit more information is to right click and then click on variable information. You'll get a little bit more information. So this question is of course asking something about have you ever been divorced or separated? Possible answers are yes, no, don't know. I don't know how you couldn't know that. Um, nine is just not applicable. So for everybody who's never been married, uh, this would just be not applicable to them. So uh, the researcher would just write down nine and say, okay, well, this person never been married, so it's just not an applicable question. And then zero is IAP. It essentially means that the person just didn't answer the question. I'm sure you've all probably like gotten calls by surveyors before. You answer a few of them, you get bored and you just hang up. That happens a lot on surveys. Um, or maybe you think something like, uh, your social class, so whether or not your upper, lower, or middle class influences whether or not you support gun laws, favor or oppose gun permits. Um, maybe you think that your health will influence uh, your happiness. Um, maybe you think something like Your belief in the existence of God will influence your opinion on homosexual relations, okay? So another thing that's important when you're formulating your hypothesis is you need to know what's actually being asked in the survey, okay? So what happens a lot of times is students, they'll see something like sex, okay? And they'll say something like people who are uh, religious are less likely to have sex, okay? Now, what is problematic about that hypothesis? You have an independent variable, which would be religion. You have a dependent variable, which is sex. And you uh, are making an argument that people who are religious are less likely to have sex. The thing that's problematic about that hypothesis is that this variable is not asking about whether or not the individual has had sex or not, or how likely they are to have sex. This, qu this question on the survey is asking whether or not the respondent is male or female, okay? So like I said, the way you would know that, you hover over it, it's asking about re respondent sex, and then the possible answers are male and female, okay? So this question is not asking about whether or not somebody had sex or not, okay? A lot, another problem that a lot of students do is they see something like uh, T 
teen sex, right? And they just assume that it's asking about whether or not somebody had sex as a teenager. But again, that, that, uh, this variable, teen sex, is not asking about that, okay? So if you maybe think that like people who are religious are less likely to have teen sex, the thing that's problematic about this is that this is, very, this is actually asking about opinions and not about behavior. So we can hover over this, sex before marriage, teens 14 to 16 years of age. We can right click and then the possible responses are always wrong, almost always wrong, sometimes wrong, not wrong at all, others don't know, not applicable, and of course again the person didn't answer. So I already know that this is asking about attitudes towards teenage sex or sex before marriage with, amongst teenagers, right? But if you're not really 100% sure what the question, what question is being asked, what again you need to do is go to the General Social Survey Data Explorer to see what's being asked so that when you're formulating your hypothesis, you can formulate the hypothesis in a way that you're testing uh, what's actually being asked in the survey, if that makes sense. So you don't want to say, okay, well, I'm going to test whether or not religion influences whether or not people have sex as teenagers, because this variable, teen sex, is not asking about whether or not you had sex as a teenager. It's asking about attitudes and opinions towards premarital sex amongst teenagers, right? So a good hypothesis would be something like religion, people who are religious are more likely to, to uh, be opposed to sex before marriage amongst teenagers, okay? So it's important that you understand what's actually being asked on the survey and you don't just assume what these questions are asking, okay? Um, hopefully that gives you all some idea on, you know, the types of uh, hypotheses that you could come up with. It's important that you also understand that a hypothesis is a statement about the relationship between the two variables. It's not a question. So you're making a statement which ends in a period as opposed to a question which ends in a question mark, right? So you can say something like uh, sex influences whether or not people favor or oppose spanking to discipline the child, okay? But you can't say something like, as far as a hypothesis, does sex influence whether or not uh, people favor spanking to discipline the child, okay? So that's not a hypothesis. That's not a statement about the relationship between the two, between two variables. That is a question about the relationship between two variables. All right, hopefully you all have some ideas, you know, look through some of this stuff. Maybe you can look at you know, religion and religion and premarital sex, religion and beliefs in the afterlife. Uh, maybe you could look at whether or not something like income influences, whether or not you ever, I don't know, paid for sex or something like that. Um, so there's a lot of like interesting variables that you can use. So uh, good luck with this and uh, have some fun with it.